Hello everyone, Vanguard of Valor here, and welcome back to another episode of FTL. Now, as always, if you're not interested in actually watching the setup, you can click right about here to skip ahead. But if you are going to listen, good for you, and let's get started talking about our ship. So here we go, we're going to jump over, we're going to be using the Slug Cruiser Type B today, long time coming. Let's rename it first, and then we'll get to talking about the ship itself. So we're going to rename it from the Stormwalker into the VSS Clairvoyance. There we go. Since we have these telepathic slugs on board, it sounds pretty apt to me. We're going to make you Psychic. You, Caldwell, can be renamed Oracle. And there we go. And the third one, Jorlak. You're no longer going to be Jorlak. You are going to be a Seer. Yes, sir. Seer. There we go. Psychic, Oracle, and Seer. Sounds good to me. Now, this ship does require some mentionings, which is a terrible way of speaking. But the point is, there are a couple things worth mentioning on this ship. First of all, you don't have radar, and you don't have a med bay. Two very basic things that you just do not have equipped. You have slugs, so having radar isn't the most important thing at the start of the game, but you do need it if you want to be able to deal with things such as fires or hull breaches without knowing where they are. And you have no med bay, so in order to heal people, we're going to have to be relying on our healing burst weapon. We can bomb a weapon to heal anyone inside. But that does have its own disadvantages as well, because while we can use bombs to heal people, bombs are also our only offensive weapon. To counteract that, the ship does come with a teleporter, that to begin with, and three crew, which means you can leave one in the helm and teleport two other slugs over to the other ship and try and kill them that way. But it is definitely going to be a weird start to the ship. Definitely going to be weird. If we hide the rooms, that's what it looks like. It's got this kind of like yin yan uh, balance thing going on, where the colors alternate on the two sides. Kind of cool. You got a mix in the middle. And last thing worth noting is it does come with slug repair gel, so it automatically repairs hull breaches, although it does not deal with fires. Now, these are basically since they're slugs, they're basically just humans who can sense enemies, so they're they're decent. You start with three, which is pretty good. And uh, to unlock this particular variant, do one last thing and then we'll get started. We have to unlock two of these three achievements. First one being we're in position for using the slug cruiser and having vision of every room of the enemy ship without functioning sensors, which I think is going to be easiest with this one, because you have two slugs and a teleporter, so if we get like a... whatever the name of that small... the smallest slug ship that you fight, it only has like five rooms, it would probably be quite easy to get this achievement for with this ship, but I haven't got it yet. Home Sweet Home, which involves dumping to 30 nebula locations before Sector 8, which is also quite easy with the slugs, as long as you actually make sure to go to nebula locations and you have enough of them on your map doesn't necessarily mean uh, sectors of nebula, just nodes in nebulas. And the Disintegration Ray achievement for using the Slug Cruiser and killing three enemy crew members with one shot from your anti-bio beam, which you start out with on the Type A. Now, this is not that hard as long as you get a, shoot crypt a ship that has three crew members that have about the same amount of total health and that stay in rooms you can reach with all one beam. As long as those three things happen, it's pretty easy to kill three people in one shot. But that's enough talking about the ship time to actually go fly it. So, here we go. Alright, the data we carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. As always, we'll need supplies for the journey, and as always, those rebels will be chasing us. So we'll need to explore as much as we can, but we'll make sure we move on. Now, here we go. Since this ship doesn't come with a med bay, we can't depower it when we don't have it in use. So this is literally all the power we get. Let's put some into our engines, and power up our Artemis missile, I guess. And part of the I don't know. It's better when you can get one more power bar and you can use both your missiles simultaneously. We'll head over to this distress beacon and see what they have to offer. Alright, the distress signal is coming from a small space station orbiting an uninhabited planet. Their satellite defense system has gone haywire and the repair crew can't approach without being fired on. Let's try and destroy the defense system from a distance. BAM! We fire a few follies from a distance and it's clear the defense system is no match for our weapons. I mean, our, our one Artemis missile. <laughs> oh, it's not a very good defense system, guys. However, the station does not seem happy with our solution. We gather 10 scrap from the wreckage as well as the missile and drone part and run before there's trouble. We're going to use that to buy another power bar. Perfect. Now we can have both of our weapons on simultaneously. Much better, since these bombs take a fairly long time to charge up. Ooh, so what we're looking for here is any ship that isn't a Zoltan or a drone. Anything other than that we have a chance at fighting. We detect two ships, one chasing the other. Scanners show the pursuer is a pirate. Let's aid those civilians. Bam! We power up weapons and engage the pirate ship. Alright, two people in there, we're gonna jump straight on board. Hopefully they don't kill us. Hello, guys. There's a mantis in there, that's not good. Definitely less than ideal. We only have one person left in our main ship itself. 
Which is also less than ideal, but... So it goes. Let's make them think about something other than us for a minute. They're not thinking about anything other than us. Run, guys. Run, 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 run. Oh, there we go. There's the achievement for we're in position. I guess we had one slug in this room and one slug in this room. We got all those rooms simultaneously. That works. That works. Alright. Get out of there, guys. Oh, good. You distracted them by repairing that system. That'll give you enough time to... Re oh, no, hang on. I can heal bomb you. <laughs> I always forget they don't have a med bay. Bam! Heal. Okay, go kill those guys now. I was going to teleport them out and put them in the med bay, but I don't have a med bay. That kind of thing's important to remember, otherwise you're going to find yourself in sticky situations. One of the biggest problems with this ship is it has a really high chance of running out of bombs really fast. Alright, there are no more life signs detected on the pirate ship. We gather a fuel, two missiles, and 22 scrap before contacting the civilians. However, they made a fast retreat while we were distracting those chasing them. Thanks for nothing, jerks. Alright, these guys are at half health. Now, I'm tempted to just heal bomb them now because it's probably better than leaving them weak for the next area. So we're going to do just that. And we're going to jump. There's a store over there. We don't need that. Jump around and see if we can't make some more money. The nearby planet shows signs of habitation and great beauty. However, the planetary defense system looping its message into space, talking of a quarantine level 5, implies that we may not want to go there. Alright. One of the other interesting things about this ship is how many doors it has to space. We stumble across a forward scout of the rebel fleet. Alright, they're powering up their FTL, and if they get away, they will know that warn the fleet of our position. But as you see, there's doors here, there's doors here, there's doors here, there's doors here, there's doors here. <laughs> Anywhere you want, there's doors. So you can basically vent from anywhere. Now, this could be quite unfortunate. If they have anti-personnel drones in there, we could be in trouble. But we're going to teleport into their helm. And we're going to... Oh, the... Ooh. This is a beam drone, this is a laser. If it knocks out our shields, we could be in trouble. However, I need to go for the engines with the Artemis missile because we want to stop them from running away while we're on board. Reload those shields. Ah, no. Too slow. Alright, guys. You're going to run down here now and start fighting that guy. Awesome. Okay. Now we're going to Artemis missile the helm. Ha-ha! There we go. We're going to healing bomb ourselves. Boop! There we go, and he'll run over to help us. We may take some more damage here, but we should be able to kill these guys no problem because we now outnumber them quite significantly. I do not want to use any more missiles against them because that's going to be quite of a waste given how little we have to begin with. And down he goes. The ship goes silent, and we're relieved to know that we're still one, set, one step ahead of the fleet. We gather one fuel, one drone part, and 15 scrap. And they broke our teleporter. That's bad. I need that teleporter to be online so I can bring these guys back to fix the oxygen. Hurry up and fix that thing quick, guy. You're gonna suffocate in there otherwise, and I don't wanna leave these guys on an enemy ship for any longer than we have to. And, hang on, get you out of that teleporter bay so I can teleport them back. Here we go, teleport them back. Go help him fix the teleporter. Everyone's still, he's got full health, which is good. And, uh, here we go, okay. Back in there, and send him back over there. And I will heal them all up. There we go. Alright. So, now we're back set up like we should be. Now, we're actually going to... Uh, should we? Mm, I don't know. I kind of want to upgrade our engines again right now, but I'm going to hold on to our money for a little bit longer. If we can get level 2 shields first, that would be good. Given they're not particularly expensive, but are quite useful. Let's jump ahead and see what we can get over here. Anything here? Ah, uh -huh, yes, there is. Upon completing our jump, we receive a message from a nearby ship, saying, Greetings, and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we'll let you continue on your way. Well, I'm not going to pay a fee, thanks. I'm going to reject that offer, and we're gonna in, going to come in and kill them. Now they say too bad, but I don't think so. This could actually be dangerous. We will need to make sure we take out their weapons before they get manage us with two lasers simultaneously. But we have full health, so we're going to jump straight to their helm and make them regret fighting us. Although, they're a mantis, so it might be us doing the regretting. Well, just have to fight him and find out. An Artemis to the weapons should make them a lot less dangerous, though, especially because they missed that first rocket. And down he goes, as long as that NG does not decide to attack this one. No, fight the other guy. Fight the other guy. <laughs> he does not want to fight the other guy. Oh, man. 
come on. No, he really does not want to fight the other guy. There we go, okay. <laughs> I had to rearrange our people around there to make sure he was fighting the guy with full health, not the guy with no health. Alright, down they go. With the crew dead, we also take all the fuel we can out of their storage. We gather 5 fuel and 19 scrap from the ship before moving on. We really need bombs though, that's what we need, guys. Healing bomb! It's really disappointing when you miss your own ship with a healing bomb. It's like, guys, you are aiming at yourselves. Couldn't you just take the bomb out of storage and put it in the room? Alright. Now we find a nearby space station offering to trade us two fuel for two drones. But I don't need drones, and I do need fuel, so we're going to reject that offer for the time being. We have a store over there, which is okay. We still don't really need a store, although I would take a med bay. Come to think of it, I would definitely take a med bay, although I don't know if I have money to buy one. Hopefully we'll get some money from this spot, and then we can check if they have med bays for sale. Small Mantis cruisers, broadcasting a repeating message on a wide brand frequency. All non-Mantis ships that enter our territory are forfeit. Lower your shields and surrender if you value your lives. Well, I'm not interested in surrendering. You can come teleport on board our ship, we'll kill you, and then we'll go teleport on board your ship. No, suffocate him, please. There we go. Alright, we'll send... Who's a better fighter? Oracle or Seer? Oracle's a much better fighter, so we'll go send Seer to get some more battle experience. Once he unsuffocates himself. Also, we're going to want to take out their weapons as quickly as possible, because those rockets are going to hurt. There we go, weapons are down. They probably have a single mantis in there trying to fix them, so that's not going to be too effective for them. He tries to teleport away, but I'm pretty sure he died just before he got away. Yeah, he did. And we're going to teleport in there to finish the job on this guy. Oh, it's an NG. Oh, poor guy. He has no idea what he's about to face. No med bay either, so we can't go heal up. He's just going to die. And there's not a thing they can do about it. And down he goes. Alright, there are no more life signs remaining on the ship, so we strip it of useful materials, gathering two fuel, a missile, and 19 scrap. Fantastic. Now let's teleport back on board our ship before we jump away like idiots. There we go. Now if we can find a med bay in this store, that would be great. <laughs> Not having a med bay is the most irritating thing about this ship. The space station here is a traveling merchant showing us his wares, and he does have a med bay! Huzzah! Bought. That's definitely worth the cost, no matter what it is. The thing is so frustrating when you don't have one. Alright, so we can power up our med bay and actually go heal our crew properly. Now, we will still be using our healing bombs, we're not going to sell that system, because they're great for keeping your crew on the enemy ship and saving a lot of time. The thing is, we also want to make sure that we can heal people without wasting bombs, or if we don't have any bombs left. So, this is a great thing to keep yourself alive for a longer period of time. Now, we have one, two, probably not three jumps here, but we're going to do them anyway. We might have to do a, a runner on the last stage. Upon completing our jump, we receive a message from a nearby ship saying, Greetings and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we'll let you continue on your way. No, I'm not interested even if you sing it. Now, they say, too bad, we will regret this decision, but I'm not entirely convinced. However, these guys do have a med bay, so it will be a little bit more difficult than previously. So, let's see, if we can't teleport in, let's teleport into their helm. They might send someone to fight us. They have Mantis. Uh, poop. Alright. Well, this will be a bit of a trouble then. Let's see if we can't knock out their weapons with the preliminary Artemis missile. Good, good. There's weapons down. Now, we are taking some pretty bad damage here. Um, we have a healing bomb ready in about a second that we'll be able to use. Let's try that. Now. Ah, full health. Fantastic. And second Artemis missile goes straight for the med bay. Hit. There we go. Alright, we hit them. Now we get in there and we kill them before they can repair it, because that makes us a lot more effective. Having them repair their med bay makes them a lot harder to fight with. And we leveled up one of our melee fighters. Fantastic. Okay, now kill that rock and we should be good to go. Kill him dead. Fantastic. Alright. Now that the ship has been empty of hostiles, we search it, finding a prisoner who offers to join our crew. We also get 16 scrap. Awesome. Mikhail, you are a human, which is less than ideal, but you are going to be good for this, because you're going to let us power some systems. I might put you in the engine for the enhanced dodge potential. Normally, you wouldn't go for that, but we don't really need our weapons. It's just shields or engines at the moment that are more important. So, let's power up our med base some more, heal our people up. Everyone else has full health. Yes, they do. 
Alright, Seer, you're gonna head back to the teleporter. And Oracle, when you're ready there, you're gonna head back to the teleporter. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now, we do have some money. I'm just gonna jump out of here, though. I'm not gonna waste any time. We can buy some more upgrades in the next area. Alright, we've arrived at the Long Range Beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, we can jump to the next sector, they say. However, scanners are showing intelligent life forms on a nearby planet, with no match found in the database. Let's investigate. Ooh. We land a small shuttle in an enormous field whose only occupants are small, brightly colored, six legged, horse like animals. Could they be what our scans picked up? We could try and communicate peacefully or try and enslave them. But we can also attempt to communicate telepathically with our slugman crew. Let's do that. After a moment, our crew tells us that these are simple beings who enjoy a peaceful life. However, this is not the first time a ship has landed here. They inform us of a nearby crash site. We follow the directions and discover an ancient NG ship. We find a deactivated NG inside and reroute power from our shuttle to resuscitate it. After a while, it reboots, rebuilds itself, and offers to join our crew. Awesome. Hey, Kirby. Welcome aboard. You're going to head over there to the shields. And you're going to take up position there. Very nice. That was pretty good. We got suddenly two crew at the end of that sector. I'm not going to complain about that. I mean, we can go to a pirate-controlled sector or an uncharted nebula. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not entirely sure what our best course of action is going to be, but we're probably going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I don't like how there's two nebulas at the end, but at least we're in a slug ship, so we're going to have some chances at seeing what's going on in there. We've entered a sector thick with nebula. We'll have to navigate on instinct. Uh, well, here goes instinct. On the plus side, we don't actually have any scanners to take a disadvantage from, so <laughs> that's not so bad. Although this is not good. Ugh, Rebel automated ships and Zoltan are our worst enemies here. We may honestly just want to avoid fighting it. An advanced Rebel automated ship remains stationed near a small Rebel space station. However, without functioning sensors, it's impossible to tell what's inside. And as much as I hate avoiding enemies, this is really expensive for us to fight. It's going to take at least four, maybe five, one, two, three, four, five rockets to kill him. And we only have 16. So we're going to avoid provoking the ship and, unfortunately, leave him alone. Hopefully we'll get luckier up ahead and find enemies we can actually fight. Alright. Aha! We arrive in the middle of a plasma storm. Despite the harsh conditions, a rebel scout is waiting for us. Alright, well you know what? We're gonna jump straight in there. We're gonna rely heavily on our boarding party to do damage this time. So you're gonna jump straight into their helm there, friend, as soon as they get far away. And go! Because the more damage we can do before they get there, the better. They do have two humans, so we should have a, a marginal advantage since one of our slugs has a leveled up fighting skill. And honestly, I'm not sure what else we're supposed to do here, because we can't really divert any power anywhere else. I'm going to send our energy over to weapons to speed up that level up. We're going to take damage from every attack they throw at us, especially those beam weapons. And there go the weapon systems. That's unfortunate. And there goes our engines. That is going to make things a lot more difficult for us, because we no longer can send over heal bombs as quickly as I would like. This is going to really hurt. We are taking a lot of damage, and we are going to have to run away now kill off that guy and run guys all right get them into the med bay and we'll send them back as quickly as possible and we're on fire now too fantastic turn on no uh, turn, uh, turn on the healing bombs turn on the med bay heal up heal up heal up we got to do this fast guys fast 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 they're gonna keep wrecking us otherwise they've got two crew one of them is heavily damaged and they damaged our teleporter like jerks we are taking a lot of damage here this is not good all right come on come on come on as almost recharged, send them back over to the teleporter room so we can get back on the enemy ship and finish them off before we get destroyed here. We're taking a lot of damage. Wow. Okay, slugs. Get in there. Teleport on board the enemy ship. Kill that guy. Kill the other guy. Do your jobs. Everything that they shoot is going to hit us. It's going to do a lot of damage. We may be able to survive this fight, but it's going to be close. I'm not convinced that we can actually survive it. But we're going to do our best anyway and see if we can't make it. We shouldn't need to use anything fancy for this. We just need to survive. And there we go. We killed them. There are no more life signs remaining on the ship, so we strip it of useful materials, getting a few more drone parts and 29 scrap. Ah, now that sucked. <laughs> That's all I have to say about that. That sucked. All right, teleport these guys back on board ship. Now this is where having a med bay is nice, because we can just send them over there. If we had shields, we probably wouldn't have taken any damage from them. But the fact that we're stuck in a nebula means we couldn't have that access to our shields. Run through the fire there, guys. Good, good. This should go out soon. We do have level 2 doors, so it shouldn't spread anywhere. 
which is frustrating when it doesn't actually want to do what it's supposed to. Alright, so these guys are going to head in there. Stupid ion storms, this is why I hate nebulas. You ruin everything. Why won't this fire go out? Wow. Okay, let's just quickly turn off our oxygen system, so I think it burns out really fast. And then we'll turn our oxygen back on. Why is this fire not going away? What is this? Come on. Get out of there, fire. There we go. Alright. Power back that up. Power back that up. Power that back up. Suffocate a little bit as you go through there. Very good. And hopefully we'll have better luck. Uh, not doing so good so far. Alright. Power back. Now what are we facing off against? A rebel ship in the nebula ahead of us, trying to stay off the radar. We can stay hidden or prepare to chase them. Let's chase them. We follow their vapor trails and surf into their six o'clock weapons hot. Oh, yeah, six o'clock weapons hot. Uh. <laughs> Such a weird way of saying it. All right, they do have defense drones. That's okay. We, it means we should be able to teleport on board without any fear of them having uh, anti-personnel drones. So we're just going to punch them in the face with our fantastic slug army. Artemis missile is going to take nothing out because they do have an anti-missile uh, drone. So we're just gonna hope they miss a lot. And we are taking some damage, but we look like we're doing okay in there. We're gonna kill off that second that third crew member in a second. And we're gonna heal ourselves up right now. Boop, full health. Alright, round two. Fight! Now I know it's not entirely necessary that we use the uh, healing bombs. We could teleport them back out, bring them back over, teleport them back in. But it is much more efficient to do it this way. And more fun, honestly. There we go. There are no more life signs remaining on the ship, so we strip it of fuel, missiles, and 29 scrap. Very nice. We'll teleport back on board our own ship and send them to get healed up. Then we can move onwards. Alright, slug murder team. So the slug murder force is go. I need more power is what I need. I've got 89 scrap, so I'm going to buy level 2 shields, put a power bar into it. We're one away from having it full for another power bar. But, uh... You know, that's fine. We'll take our power out of the engines temporarily and put it in our shields. Because level 2 shields would have saved our lives back there, so we might as well make use of them now. Now let's keep moving. See if we can't make some profit here. Navigating the fog blind, we practically bump holes with the Mantis ship. They hail us. Pah! This transgression will be overlooked. Nebula, very dangerous. Next time, humans all die. Now we can say there won't be a next time and fight them. Or we can just decide that this place is dangerous enough and move on. However, they do have a teleporter, so some of their crew will come fight us here, which could give us an advantage when we go on board them. So let's say there won't be a next time, and open fire. Do 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 do! Come fight us! They do have a four crew team, though, so that could be pretty dangerous, and they are all mantis from the looks of things. Alright, you know what? That's fine. We're gonna fight them like this. Hit them with an Artemis missile on the weapons. We're gonna run away and heal in a second, because we can. Their weapons are offline now. You guys, get out of there. Go heal up. Actually, I don't have any way of powering my... There we go. Turn off the teleporter, power the healing system. That Engie's going to get beat up in a second. He's going to have to run. But that's okay, because our slug team will be just about ready to come back and help fight again. Alright, Kirby, run. And slug force, go! Team slug force. Alright. Team Slug Force is in position, they have a single laser, and they have both of the lasers back up online. That's unfortunate, they must have NG in their ship there. Um, we're going to, I guess, hmm, what should I hit that would make them want to come back? Let's hit their oxygen, maybe, just for fun? No. No, I see the weapons. Hit the most dangerous thing first. Alright, there they go, they have run off to go back to their own ship. You're going to go back to your shield position. One of them died in the transport. It's disappointing when they die in transport, because I don't think you actually get any credit for it on your melee fighters. But I'm not entirely sure about that, so I can't really say. We'll heal up here, and then we'll go bring the fight to them. Although I'm pretty sure they do have NG on board, because they are repairing things quite quickly. Let's head back over here, and get over there. You know what? I don't think these guys can actually hurt me with those weapons, so I don't know why I've been bombing them. Yeah, no, they can't get through our shields. Kind of jumped the gun there, didn't I? Alright. Let's get over here and fight this guy. And they do have an NG, they have another full health. Is this guy a non-full health one? There must be one that has non-full health. Yeah, there he is. Alright, he's dead. That's good. Now we'll fight these guys off in here. We may need to use a healing bomb to make sure we stay alive, but because I'm not intending on pulling them out. 
Let's see. Yeah, we'll use one. There we go. And they have full health steel, so that makes it valuable, I guess. With the crew dead, we're able to take fuel out of storage, gathering three fuel and 31 scrap. Alright, teleport them back over here. Hey there, guys. Yeah, have you actually got full health? You do. I guess that was a perfectly timed heal bomb. <laughs> Probably means they didn't need to use one, but whatever. Whatever. Alright, buy some power bars, put them in the engines. Next up, we're going to start powering up our engines up to level 4 or 5. We could go to the store and see if we can't get some health, but I really don't want to have to come back here afterwards. So you know what? Let's just risk it and keep going. Level 2 shields should be sufficient to keep us safe for the most part, except for rockets at these guys. The drone isn't looking for us, maybe scouting ahead for the rebel expansion or seeking to use this nebula for cover, but it identifies us as hostile nonetheless and moves into fight. Now this is going to suck, because we can't get in there with our teleporter, we don't have a level 2 so we can't get in there and last long enough without suffocating, and uh, they've got lots of weapons, so let's fire an Artemis missile at their weapons and then run, if we can actually manage to do that fast enough. The bomb is the only one that's important to you, the other ones can't get through our shields. Take out that bomb, there we go. Now we can just chill out here. Because it'll take us another four missiles to kill them, I believe. Two, yeah, three. Yeah. That's no good. So we're just going to hide. Hopefully it'll take them too long to repair themselves. And we'll be able to get away. We really need a new weapon. Really, really. Because otherwise we just can't fight these guys or Zoltan. Zoltan only takes three missiles to burst through, which isn't too bad, but definitely less than ideal. Even a burst laser would be perfect. <laughs> burst laser mark two, done, that's all we need. But we'll have to hopefully get lucky, and we're gonna jump out of here and see if we get lucky up ahead. Oh, a store, that'll be good for repairs. Let's go. I don't wanna go straight there though. Uh I want more money before I go there. Let's go around a little bit first, and then we'll go to the store after. No point in going there when you have no funds. Our crew are constantly looking out the windows, checking for hostiles, jumping at every creek and moan of the ship. The tension is almost palpable. It can almost be palped. And that means it's gotta be important. We jump over here, and there's nothing else here either. With the sensors down, we spend a good deal of time staring at the window. It is, we must admit, rather beautiful here. Keep going. We need some money, guys. I want to find a ship that we can teleport on board and murder. Alright, a pirate ship arrives shortly after us. Judging from the fact that it's trying to avoid our ship, we assume it's a smuggler trying to stay away from the beacons. Let's attack that pirate. Huzzah! We power up our weapons and move into engage. Now this was the kind of ship I was talking about before that would be really easy to uh, kill all of the crew in one go with the slugs. Get like see the whole ship, because I mean if I one in this room and one in this room I should be able to see everything. Uh, but that's okay, we're just gonna tank our way out here. We should be more or less safe from their attacks, unless, yeah, okay, unless all those hit at the same time. Because that Zoltan's gonna go down in a second, then we can work together on killing the slug. Although, he might have too much health for this to be easy. Yeah, no. Not easy. Alright, get out of there. He's gonna come fight us. I'm gonna come back in here. He's gonna come back in here. And we can kill him with the strong guy. And he dies. There we go. So cycling your crew around like that moving him into this room and then back into this room makes him no longer the high priority target and when the enemy goes into the room he'll fight the first person in the room. So that was what we did there to make sure he didn't attack our weak guy. Searching the remains we find the cargo was military grade drone schematics. We bring them aboard and install them on our own ship. Well, we don't actually install them because we don't have a drone system, but that's the intention. We gather 18 scrap and an empty ship drone mark 1. Okay, this is what I mean. Put one there, one there. Done. Got the whole hostile ship covered up. And I'll have to put them back in the same room, so I can teleport them back together. There we go, put them in the med bay. We have a whole bunch of money, so we're going to go over, not a whole bunch, but you know, some money. We can sell that drone as well. So we're going to take them over to the store, sell the drone, and hopefully buy some repairs. Maybe a weapon if we really, really, really see a good one. But I have a suspicion that we will be buying repairs. Alright guys, once you're all healed up, we'll be ready to go, and there you go, Seer. A little bit slow, but that's good enough for me. Let's jump to the store, and hopefully it'll be a $2 repair day. If it's a $4 repair day, it's going to suck, because so we're not going to be able to buy many. Seeing a trade depot set up on the nearby beacon implies there's an alien settlement nearby. Well, no no kidding. We decide to check out their wares. That was good, they have a $2 repair, so means you can buy full repairs for all of our money. <laughs> We could also try and get these things, but they're not really good enough for what we need. So let's buy the repairs, sell the system, an anti-ship drone. And we don't have any money for anything else, so we're going to buy some fuel, because you always need more fuel, and move on. Oop. 
Anything here? Yes, there is. There's a black market weapons trader spinning us a tale of the dangers of the nebula before pushing his wares. You could spend 65 scrap to buy a weapon, which is almost always going to wind up with him trying to steal your money and then run away. We can ignore him or attack him. Fortunately, he's a Zoltan, so we can't really afford to attack him, so we're going to have to ignore him. We're getting unlucky here with these events. One, two, three. We can probably manage three more jumps. If we have to fight drones, if we have to fight Zoltan, we're going to have a really hard time of it. A pirate ship arrives shortly after us, and it is also trying to stay away from the beacons. Let's attack them. Huzzah! We power up weapons and move in to engage. There are two people only on this ship. They probably have single-shot lasers, so we should be okay to just jump in there and murder them. Oh, hey, look, look at that. More fellow slugs. Oracles has now leveled up to Tier 2 of fighting. Seer, meanwhile, is still level 1. Not ideal, but you know what? That's okay. That is okay. I might have to use one healing bomb to heal them up here. Oh no, he has a he has a med bay. We have to nuke that thing. Okay, kill the med bay. Get over there. Don't let them repair the med bay and kill them in the med bay. All right, now we are gonna heal. We are gonna heal. Boop. We haven't missed any of our healing bombs yet. That's fantastic. Missing your healing bombs is one of the most frustrating thing. The ship refuses to fight. What the sh what what the ship refuses to fight? But we still detect life signatures? That... what? <laughs> I, I don't even understand that sentence. Apparently there was a prisoner transport. The single survivor offers to join our crew in exchange for their freedom. We also gather 28 scrap. Oh, it's a Zoltan! Fantastic! Free energy for everyone. Put him in the weapons bay. But yeah, <laughs> that sounds like it was a mistranslation of sorts. The enemy ship refuses to fight. I see. Well, we now have more fuel, which is always nice. More energy, I mean. Another crew member, looking good. Mikhail has a little bit of damage, but that's okay. No one cares about him anyway. We could buy that. Let's buy that. 40, and that'll give us another level of engine power. Engine power is definitely always good. Staying alive is never a bad thing. Now we jump into the sector with an automated rebel scout in it. Let's attempt to outrun it, otherwise we're going to get murdered. Despite our advanced engines, we are unable to shake them. We turn and prepare for a fight. Yuck. Okay. Um. Less than ideal. There's really no incentive to fight these guys. This one also is going to take four missiles. Which is way too expensive. Let's just not even bother. Put power in the engines. Get ready to run. Actually, yeah. We're going to do more than that. We're going to send him into the shield room as well. And depower our med bay. To put that power directly into our shields. Fantastic. We are suffocating slowly here, but he shouldn't be able to hurt us, which is the important thing. And we should be able to get away as quickly as possible. If our oxygen drops below 50%, then I will go back and move our oxygen into that, our power into the oxygen room. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think we'll be able to get away before it gets that low. It is starting to get a little bit pink in those rooms, though, but here we go. 53, 52, 51, and jump happens at 51%. What'd I tell ya? Let's get out of there. Not a good looking place to be. Alright, long range beacon is almost hidden within the nebula, so there's nothing else there for us to deal with. Zoltan, get back to your position. Power up that oxygen bay, guys. Don't be stupid. There we go. Put the power back where it's needed. And back in the shields. Voila. Now let's get out of here. Go to a Zoltan controlled sector, which is going to be bad for us, or a rock controlled sector. Let's go to the rock sector. The Zoltan controlled sector would be bad because there is a lot of Zoltan there and we are really bad at fighting them. So hopefully the rock sector has fewer Zoltan and fewer drones. The rock people have a particularly aggressive stance towards alien races trespassing in their space. We should tread carefully here. Now I think this is sector 3, is it not? Yes it is. So, as much fun as it would be to keep, room, keep moving, we're going to have to stop this episode here for now. If you've enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like the episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.